the Texans beat the Lions 30 to 23 in the second preseason game. And before we really get into the game, I want to talk about something that didn't really happen in the game, but that I still think is very, very important, and that's Matt Khalil not playing. That's right, Matt Khalil didn't play this game. He didn't practice on, what was it, Thursday. He didn't practice on Monday. The Texans had Friday off. They had Tuesday off. So things aren't looking so good for Matt Khalil. Yes, I did hear, oh, he's got a little injury. But come on. A guy like Matt Khalil should be playing through that. The guy, in my opinion, that's it. The writing's on the wall for him. And to make things worse for him, but way better for the Texans, the guy that replaced him at left tackle, Rod Johnson, I thought he looked really good. Best way to describe him, in my opinion, is like a boulder. Like, he just didn't budge. He didn't move. And yes, you know, I understand. I have to say this. It's preseason. They were going up against the Lions. They don't have any proven pass rushers. But it's a good start. He certainly looked better than Matt Khalil did last week. And probably better than Julian Davenport did all of last year. So that steps in the right direction in my opinion. Now let's actually get into the game. The first drive, Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins actually played, surprisingly. And Deshaun Watson just completely shredded the Lions' defense. I mean, I think he went like 4 for 6 and like 60-something yards. Or something like that. He just completely shredded them. The offensive line as a whole, I'm not even going to say, whoa, they held up. No, they actually did really good. The starting offensive line consisted of Rod Johnson at left tackle, Titus Howard at left guard, Zach Fulton at center, Max Sharping at right guard, and Sean Stroh Henderson at right tackle. They played about three three series. And I only think they had one bad play in their whole playing time together as a unit. And that came in the first drive. I think it was second and goal on a run play. They just let the blitz get right through there and blow up the play. But other than that, I mean, they protected Joe Webb well. They protected Deshaun well. And, you know, steps in the right direction. And like I said about Rod Johnson, Rod Johnson looked better than Matt Kahlo. And, you know, possibly he could be our starting left tackle for this season. I'll say this. I am more comfortable going with the unproven third-year guy in Rod Johnson than going with Matt Khalil, a guy who has proven to be already trash can on wheels. Now, on the first defensive series for the Texans, Merciless got a strip sack on the second play, you know, easily beat the guy he was lined up against. And then on, on the third down on that same drive, Bradley Roby had a beautiful pass breakup. Like, I feel like that's worth mentioning. I don't think they really played much after that and y'all had DeAndre Carter looking nice I thought DeAndre Carter did some things you know obviously he's the backup slot receiver and if Kiki does miss some time this year I think we're in good hands with DeAndre Carter but to be fair I kind of already thought that because if you go back to my 53 man roster prediction video from like a couple months ago I had already predicted DeAndre Carter to be the backup slot receiver. So, I think Carter has a spot locked down. I think he's going to contribute a lot to this team. And he'll really contribute a lot to this team if Kiki misses significant time. Now, like I said, the O-line, they protected Watson good. And they protected Webb good. And, you know, last week, I kind of trashed on Webb. But this week, Joe Webb pretty much did what I wanted him to do last week, and that's hold on to the ball and throw the football instead of running around. That's what he did. I mean, I'm not asking Joe Webb to be Deshaun Watson. I'm asking Joe Webb to be a quarterback 
let me see what these young receivers have. And, you know, you can't have that with Joe Webb running around. And today, or this game, Joe Webb did that. He stood in the pocket. He threw the ball, you know, sometimes well, sometimes not well. But, you know, he gave us a chance to evaluate these young receivers. And when it comes to these young receivers, I'm pretty much referring to Tyron Johnson and Vincent Smith. Yeah, Vincent Smith probably had the splashier play, the touchdown catch when Joe Webb threaded the needle. But ultimately, I think Tyron Johnson did better. Tyron Johnson got open more in many different ways. Tyron Johnson had that nice little kick return towards the end of the game. And I think Tyron Johnson is going to make this team over Joe Webb. Tyron Johnson just kept getting open and open and open and open. Like There was three plays where Tyron Johnson beat his guy deep. On one of them, unfortunately, Joe Webb underthrew it. But on this one, Tyron Johnson could have caught it, but he dropped it. On the second one, Joe Webb underthrew him again. And actually, Tyron Johnson got called for offensive pass interference. I didn't think it was offensive pass interference. I don't think it was anything, but, you know, Joe Webb still kind of underthrew him. He throws it over the top. Tyron Johnson probably comes down with it. And then on the third one, Joe Webb overthrows Tyron Johnson this time. So, you know, I think if that's Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Watson puts it right in the money and Tyron Johnson makes a big play. So overall, I think Tyron Johnson had a better game on a film perspective. You know, if you look at the stat sheet, you know, you're obviously going to see that 30-something yard touchdown Vincent Smith had. But overall, I think Tyron Johnson is in a good spot to make this team over Vincent Smith because I don't think they carry six wide receivers. Now, the next thing, the tight ends. Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, <laughs> Jarrell Adams just sent that poor Lions DB into another dimension with that stiff arm. And, you know, John Harris was saying, I believe it was John Harris, if I remember correctly, he was saying it that the Texans have five tight ends, you know, Jordan Thomas, Jordan Akins, Kahali Waring, Darren Fells, and the other is Jarrell Adams. They have five starting caliber tight ends on their roster. There is no way they carry all five of them. So maybe... You know, Jarrell Adams could possibly get traded. I remember a few years back, I believe it was 2014, maybe 2015, Rick Smith traded a no-name tight end from the team that was going to get cut anyways to the Bears for a sixth-round pick. I think Jarrell Adams has looked better than, I think his name was Kari Lee or something like that. He looked better than he ever did all preseason, so maybe... Bill O'Brien or one of the 40 Texans GMs can trade away Jarrell Adams for, you know, I don't know, fifth round pick or something, you know, just something, because there is no way Adams makes a team, and I think Adams is good enough to make a team, so maybe we can get something out of him. Um, let's talk about the running backs. You know how last week against Green Bay I said Higdon looked the best and Crockett was kind of behind him? I thought Buddy Howell did some things too pretty good over there in Green Bay. This one's different. I thought Crockett looked way better than Higdon. I thought Higdon, all Higdon was doing in my opinion was running the straight line. He wasn't looking for the open space and that's pretty much it. I thought Crockett looked better than Higdon, but Buddy Howell, late in the game, I thought he looked the best out of everyone on the running backs that played running back, you know, Taiwan Jones, Ferguson. I thought Howell looked the best. And I think Howell has earned himself the right to play with the second stringers and maybe even first stringers. Keep in mind, last year, Buddy Howell was indeed a very important player for the Texans special teams. Like he was like a special teams ace type of guy. So he has that going for him. He plays special teams. And if he could be a good and consistent back, then, hey, maybe he makes a team as a third running back. I think 
he should be the favorite in my opinion right now. And then let's flip over to the defense again. Dylan Cole, he was flying around, but we already knew that about Dylan Cole. Dylan Cole can be a stud for this defense. Only issue, staying healthy. Dylan Cole needs to stay healthy. We already know what he can do. And today he was doing some more of that. On the D-line, obviously earlier I said Merciless had that strip sack on the second play. But you had two guys that I think stood out from the second slash third group. And that's Davin Bellamy, edge rusher. I thought he did some things. And this next guy, Albert Huggins. He was playing against the third stringers, but my God, he was completely dominating the Lions' interior offensive line. He was pushing guys into the quarterback, and that's something the Texans need. So hopefully next week, Albert Huggins can... Go out there and play against second stringers. Maybe first stringers, but that'll be pushing it. But I thought he looked really good. Way better than his competition. And on the secondary, obviously we said the Bradley Roby pass breakup. I thought the second stringers did a good job. They completely shut down the Lions passing game by Josh Johnson. But once it came down to the third stringers... Jesus, man, Derek Beatty, he just kept getting picked on and picked on and picked on and picked on. He allowed like three big catches. He had a pass interference call. He did have an interception and something else. Derek Beatty actually ended the game. He had the last pass defended. Like when the Lions went for the Hail Mary there at the end, he was actually the one that batted it down. If you guys don't know who that is, that's number 30, the guy that kept getting beat. Not to be confused with Kevin Johnson, who also wore number 30 back then and also got beat. But yeah, I think Beatty, he's not going to make the team. I mean, the guy kept getting abused all day, so we know about that. Now, something else that I kind of forgot to talk about in the beginning of this video regarding the O-line. Actually, Titus Howard in particular... There was this one series where Joe Webb threw a touchdown to Jordan Thomas, but it got called back due to holding on Sunil Kalametti. I thought that was disastrous, that little series of events. But after the holding call on Sunil Kalametti, Titus Howard completely let a guy unblocked and let him go hit Joe Webb. You know, it happens. That's why Titus Howard is playing left guard at the moment. Like, those little small rookie mess-ups, it's fine right now, you know, poor Joe Webb, but it's fine right now for him to make those mistakes. But in the regular season, with Deshaun Watson, at that point, it's not okay. And if you guys are pissed at the Texans for playing Howard at left guard instead of left tackle, that play right there is why the Texans are doing it. Andre Dillard, a couple days ago, did the exact same thing. He got Cody Kessler killed. And that's what happens when you're a rookie. You make these mistakes. But when you have a franchise quarterback like Deshaun, you can't afford that to happen. You just can't throw Titus Howard into the fire at left tackle against guys like Joey Bosa, Melvin Ingram, Cameron Jordan, Calais Campbell, and just hope they learn. Maybe if we had Brock Osweiler out there, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know, I feel bad saying this, but maybe if we had someone like that out there, it'd be okay. But with Deshaun Watson, no. Keep them at guard. Let them learn. Get their feet wet compete against these guys that are clearly better than them and then transition them outside maybe next season maybe towards the end of the season hey maybe rod johnson is your starting left tackle of the future i don't know but personally after seeing what andre dillard let happen to cody kessler and after seeing what titus howard let happen to joe webb just keep titus howard and max sharping inside because they're rookies and it'll probably happen again against 
better players if they were to start outside. So keep them inside where they have help from pretty much everyone. They have help from their offensive tackle. They have help from the center, probably help from the running back. And I'm pretty sure Deshaun Watson can see someone coming from the inside more clearly than someone coming from the outside on the blind side. So I think it's okay with what they're doing with them. And, you know, hopefully things work out for the Texans. Like I said, the O-line, they looked really solid. They protected Wolf for Deshaun and Joe Webb. So, who knows, man. Maybe the O-line might not be so bad after all. But again, like I said, keep in mind, it's just preseason. And they were going up against the Detroit Lions. The Lions on defense... They aren't anything too scary. Next week against the Cowboys will be the real test where they play against a guy like Demarcus Lawrence, Leighton Vander Esch, Jalen Smith. Keep in mind, this is a dress rehearsal type game, so starters will play for pretty much a whole half, like quarter and a half or something like that. But for the most part, starters will be out there. And, you know, expect to see a lot of Deshaun Watson, a lot of that starting O-line. And hopefully, 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 I'm praying to God <laughs> that they cut Matt Khalil. Because he ain't it. I thought last week Rod Johnson looked better than him. And this week, obviously, Khalil didn't play. And I thought Rod Johnson looked really good. So, yeah, the Texans as a whole actually looked pretty good today. Well, besides Derek Beatty and that third string defensive backfield. But, yeah, for the most part, I am pretty satisfied with the way the Texans played. And thank you, Joe Webb, for actually throwing the football today instead of just running around. And, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you guys for today. If you guys think I missed anything, be sure to comment down below and yeah, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.